start hi everyone welcome to this ent session we'll do ent in three phases always do in three phases it's going to be first is going to be <coughs> ear the nose and finally throat pehle uh, ear fir throat and finally nose <clears throat> so before i start i must tell you that i'm not watching the youtube so i don't know if you uh, so if you have any questions or doubt don't post on youtube i'll not be able to see it i will not be able to answer it so any doubts or question that you have please post on the telegram group okay on the telegram group so that i can see that and if needed i will be able to answer those so i'm your ent faculty dr sanjay garol you can see the screen now like i said we'll start with the ear we'll start very slowly and as we cruise along i'll pick up speed depending on the response that you give me so ear has three parts i'm sure you know we commonly call them external ear middle ear inner ear hai na now the first thing that i draw is the pinna this is pinna let's say this is pinna pinna then there is a canal through which the sound travels at the end of the canal there is a membrane which is called the tympanic membrane and then there is a middle ear cavity with three ossicles we all know there are three ossicles so i draw three dots just to represent three ossicles and then there is a inner ear which has a cochlea and the vestibule so this round thing this uh, this uh, ring like thing that i have drawn is supposed to be a cochlea and from here the eighth nerve this is your eighth nerve carries a signal to the cortex in the brain auditory cortex as we call it where you finally hear the sound so this is how the sound travels this is the entire ear and i'm going to draw this diagram many times so get used to this now this kind of diagrams are called line diagrams we just draw few lines and you get the sense of it line diagrams are very easy to draw to teach to learn and to remember you can remember this if you draw once or twice you will remember this there is nothing there the only downside is that line diagrams are not very accurate they may be little flaws here and there but it's okay we can manage so which is the external ear this much is the external ear this much is the middle ear and this much is the inner ear now these are the three parts of the ear external ear middle ear inner ear very basic now we'll discuss the anatomy of all the three parts and then we'll proceed from there on if you ask me out of the three parts which is the most important part the part that you definitely have to know properly is the middle ear middle ear looks smallest part but it's the most important part for you and therefore middle ear will do in a little bit more details external ear inner ear relatively are less important so we can relax in these two but we'll start with the external ear external ear has this i'll remove this uh, let's say this is pinna which is called auricle you know this is the right word auricle this whole thing is called external auditory canal so canal obviously so and it is on the outer side so external and is for audit hearing so auditory canal external auditory canal now very important thing is the opening of this canal this opening the entry point is called the external auditory meatus remember this very important thing meatus Now you know that this is tympanic membrane, and the arrow that I've drawn is tympanic membrane. Now tympanic membrane, you can remember this as meringus. It's a very important name, meringus. So because and this name is important because they ask you questions like, 
Meringotomy is what kind of surgery? Meringotomy means making an opening on the meringus, on the tympanic membrane. Or meringoplasty, plasty means repair. So meringoplasty is repair of what? The last. So you say meringoplasty repair of tympanic membrane because meringus is. So the moment you hear the word meringus in ENT, you know it is tympanic membrane. And similarly, middle ear is tympanum. So see, middle ear is called tympanum. So meringoplasty and tympanoplasty. There is a difference. Meringoplasty you repair the tympanic membrane, and tympanoplasty repair the middle ear. And inner ear is of course the labyrinth. So this is the first thing that you should know: the names, the main names, the common names of the structures, common structures. Now, what is this ear made up of? If I divide the ear into two parts by drawing a line here, then this outer part of the ear is inside a bone called temporal bone. And this part is made up of cartilage. That's why when you feel your pinna, you can make out its cartilage, isn't it? Very easy. Now, can you identify the temporal bone on your skull? If I ask you to identify your point at the temporal bone, can you do that? If not, this green thing, this is a skull as you can see and this green thing is the temporal bone. Ideally, if you have attended at anatomy lectures, you will know that you should be able to identify all the skull bones, all of them, right from occipital to frontal to temporal to whatever, pterygoids and everything and these are very popular questions but this is not ENT so I am not going to go into that. I am only concerned with temporal bone. So you should be able to identify this temporal bone which looks like this. The first diagram is the medial view under C and the second diagram is the lateral view from outside but these are both temporal bones. So you should be able to identify separately there is styloid process you know this is styloid which is not the any this is root of zygoma. If you have confusion, these two bones can help you identify a temporal bone very easily. But the question they ask you is a different one. The question they ask you is that you know temporal bone is not made up of single bone, it is made up of four bones. And they ask you the name of these four bones that make the temporal bone. This is an MCQ. So the largest bone is the squamous. One second. Then there is petrous bone, mastoid bone. Can you tell me the fourth one? It's like challenge question for you. Just write in the comment. Let's see how many of you can answer the fourth name, a part of the temporal bone, because it's an important MCQ, and usually pe people do not remember the fourth one that I'm going to write. Let's see. I'm waiting for your answer. Please write if you know the answer. Yes, it is tympanic plate, tympanic plate, four bones that make the temporal bone. Just remember the names, that is it. Now there is very important thing here, a very important name actually. The first two bones, these two, they form a septum. And they ask you what is the name of the septum formed by the petrous and squamous bone? It's called corner septum. Remember this. The question they ask you is differently. They ask you that what is corner septum? That's what they ask you. So you see, corner septum is petrosquamous. See, petrosquamous suture. You know what is suture? When the two bones of the skull meet. They join that joining point is called suture. They all fuse together. They all separate bone in the beginning and they fuse together. That joining point is called the fusion point is called suture. So corner septum is a suture between the petrous bone and the squamous bone. That's the simple thing you have to know. This name will come back again. Will I'll remind you once again. Then I'll ask you. So you should remember this. Okay. So these are the bones that you have to know. And now what we'll do. Is what we'll talk about individual parts. We'll talk about pinna and then canal and then tympanic membrane, middle ear, inner ear, things like that. Uh, first of all, 
pinna there are two questions they ask you what is pinna made up of or what does pinna develop from where does pinna develop from i am sure you know most of the year develops on brachial arches brachial arch you know what is the other name for brachial arch brachial arch is also called pharyngeal arch and this is another very very important topic from the embryology point of view so in anatomy in embryology uh, there is a full chapter on brachial arch because there are six brachial arches six the they are number 1 2 3 4 5 six the fifth one disappears so remaining how many five obviously from six if you minus one five and they are number 1 2 3 4 and six fifth is gone and most of your pharynx this area which i am pointing on my face they are developed from these brachial arches. So, there are a lot of structures that come from the brachial arches. Each brachial arch gives rise to many structures. So, it becomes a full blown chapter, and questions are very frequently asked. Almost every question paper carries a question from brachial arch. It's a very important topic, but it's not an ENT topic. It's embryology or anatomy, you can say. So, in anatomy, I'm pretty sure they'll talk about this. But from the ENT point of view, there are two or three very important MCQs related to brachial arches. I'll tell you those ones. One, I was talking about pinna. Pinna develops from this brachial arch. Pinna develops from first and second brachial arch. B A stands for brachial arch for you. Right. Likewise, other parts of the ear also develops from the brachial arches. Now, ossicles, malleus incus, they also develop from the first and second arch, except foot plate of stapes. I'm sure you know that ossicle has foot plate. If you don't know, uh, don't worry. We'll I'll show you the diagram later on as we proceed. You'll know what uh, we'll discuss ossicles. So I'll not have to discuss this. Foot plate develops from what is called otic capsule. Now this is a very popular MCQ. MCQ. Foot plate develops from the otic capsule. So remember this very important question from the ossicles. So talking about pinna, pinna develops from wrinkle arch as you know already. And the second question about pinna they ask you what is pinna made up of? And you know that pinna is made up of cartilage, obviously. Cartilage here, see, this is cartilage. This pinna is here in this part. So, obviously, it is cartilage. It goes without saying. But the question they ask you is not this. The question they ask you is name the part of the pinna that does not have the cartilage. And this is a popular question name the part of the pinna that does not have the cartilage. Now, I am pretty sure that you know this part. This is called lobule. Huh, nah? Lobule has no cartilage that's why it feels so soft when you feel it but your examiner is not interested in this this is a simple answer there's one more part actually can you see there's a gap here i've left a de gap deliberately above the pinna and the canal there's actually a gap and this gap is because there is no cartilage and the name of this gap is incisura terminalis So, this name is important MCQ. So, I am writing MCQ. Wherever I write MCQ like this, MQ, it becomes a very important MCQ. Just pay attention. Jabe bhi MQ likha hua hai, wo bhot important MCQ banta hai. So, make a note of all those MQs that I write. I have written here MQ, hai na? And I have written here MQ. So, these are important MCQ. Very good, Kitu. J, you are right. Incisular terminalis. Very, very good. The next thing that we will talk about is the external auditory canal external auditory canal with external auditory meatus i told you the opening of the canal the inlet of the canal is meatus na to usi ka part hai ye meatus canal ka part hai so if they ask you meatoplasty mein kya karte you know repair the meatus that's how they ask you question now canal you have to know the shape which is s shape we draw it like this, huh, na? sleeping S, little s, I'll see, and the length, length is 24 millimeters long. What is it made up of? Out of one third is cartilage, and inner two third is bony. 
सो ऑब्वियसली इफ यू रिमेम्बर दिस इफ आई ड्रॉ द डायग्राम यहाँ पे बनाया था ना सो दिस पार्ट इज कार्टलेस आउटर एंड दिस पार्ट इज बोन ही ऑल दिस इज बोन आई टोल्ड यू ऑल दिस इज कार्टलेस सो आउट ऑफ वन थर्ड इज कार्टलेस इनर टू थर्ड इज बोन ही मोर देन आउटर इन इनर यू हैव टू रिमेम्बर दी द फ्रैक्शन वॉट परसेंटेज इज कार्टलेस वॉट फ्रैक्शन इज कार्टलेस वन थर्ड इज कार्टलेस इज अराउंड थर्टी थ्री परसेंट एंड वॉट फ्रैक्शन इज बोन ही टू थर्ड ऑफ द इनर पार्ट विच इज रफली सिक्सटी सेवन परसेंट वट वट एवर सो दैट्स वॉट यू रिमेम्बर नाउ कम्स द इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग वट इज द लाइनिंग ऑफ द कनाल कनाल इज लाइन बाई स्किन एंड स्किन इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड स्क्वामस एपिथीलियम स्किन इज स्क्वामस एपिथीलियम सो इट लाइन बाई स्किन और स्क्वामस एपिथीलियम राइट नाउ वट इज द कनाल कंटेन कंटेन दिस इज मोर इंपॉर्टेंट दैन ऑल दिस पॉइंट दैट वी डिस्कस अबाउट कनाल हियर दे आर इंपॉर्टेंट बट दे इज यू ऑल्सो इट्स नॉट डिफिकल्ट टू रिमेम्बर बट वट एम गोट टू टेल नाउ आर मोर इंपॉर्टेंट दिस दीज आर दू हैव टू हैव टू इन द कनाल देर फोर थिंग्स दे इज अ फॉरामेन कॉल्ड फॉरामेन समटाइम्स कॉल्ड फिशर ऑफ सेंटोरिनी then we have a fossa of husca then we have glands and we have hair cells four things remember these four names now the first two have no function if a structure does not have any function it's useless for me or you for anybody at least we don't know if there is any function as far as we know but they still get asked in the exam you know why because of fancy names it sounds very fancy fisher of centorini fossa fasca so sometimes they ask you where is fisher of centorini present or where is fossa fasca present they ask you this kind of questions so just for that sake you should know the name but these two they are not fancy names but they have important function and what is that function protection they protect the canal see canal is open hai na khula hua bahar se the air goes in and out freely and air has lot of pathogens dust and all that so you need something to protect your canal so that's the main thing that these to provide so fancy names बेकार होते सिंपल थिंग्स काम की होती है लाइफ में भी ऐसा ही होता कुछ डोंट फॉल फॉर फैंसी थिंग्स ऑफन दे आर डिसीविंग दे इज अ वेरी गुड सेइंग बाय सेक्सपियर दैट गिल्डेड टूम्स डू वॉम्स इन फोल्ड गिल्डेड टूम्स डू वॉम्स इन फोल्ड गिल्डेड टूम्स जिसमें लोगों को दफनाते हैं ना टूम्स गिल्डेड जिसमें बहुत कारीगरी करी होती है उसके अंदर मिलेगा आपको अल्टीमेटली वॉम्स तो कोई फायदा नहीं है इसको कारीगर करके दैट्स व्हाट इज एनीवेज नाउ हाउ मेनी टाइप्स ऑफ ग्लैंड्स डू वी हैव वी हैव टू टाइप्स ऑफ ग्लैंड्स वन इज कॉल्ड सीबीसीएस ग्लैंड एंड द अदर इज कॉल्ड एपोक्रिन ग्लैंड ऑब्वियसली इफ दे आर ग्लैंड्स दे विल हैव सिक्रेशंस एंड दिस इज योर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन व्हाट डज ईच ऑफ दिस टू ग्लैंड्स सिक्रेट इट्स इजी टू रिमेंबर सीबीसीएस because it secretes sebum so it matches you know sebum and cerumen sebum matches the name with cbcs but apocrine gland secretes cerumen cerumen therefore apocrine gland becomes a ceruminous gland a type of ceruminous gland so remember this now these two secretions they are antiseptic in property that's how they protect remember they are protecting and they are predominantly made up of fat so they are fatty point is these two secretions are always present in your canal that's the point but canal will have dust also and dead skin because canal is lined by skin and wherever there is a skin you will have a dead skin also dead skin is sometimes called keratin keratin is other name for dead skin sometimes we use that term now these four things that is sebum cerumen dust and keratin are always there in the crowd always a normal thing they are not abnormalities but the thing is 
that they do not accumulate, they do not collect, they keep on recycling, banta rata, nikalta rata, you know, that's what happens. If somehow they start collecting due to whatever problem, then it's called earwax. So this is important, earwax. What is the content of the earwax? So you know that earwax has four things. This is MCQ. The content of the earwax is MCQ. So either you'll see earwax has four things, sebum, ceramine, dust and keratin or fat, depending on the choices that they give you. It's a lot of fat, fatty. So that's all about earwax formation. But tell me if somebody has earwax, what do you do? Do you remove the wax? And how do you remove the wax? The most common thing that we do is syringing. Everybody knows I'm sure about syringing. Right? It is flushing. You flush the canal and the wax comes out. It's almost like an enema of the ear. You flush the in enema also you flush some other part, but here you flush the canal. Right. So that's called syringing, which is very basic. About syringing, you have to know two things. A you cannot just take any saline or water and start syringing. No. You have to have a particular temperature. And this is the question they ask you. What is the temperature of the water that they use for syringing? Very, very important. Can anybody tell me? Answer. That's right. What is the temperature of the water that you use for syringing of the canal? Please write in the comment. I'm waiting for your answers. 37 degree because this is same as body temperature we use the water of body temperatures right good Alphes and Dharmesh you are right because this same as the body temperature if you don't use this temperature if you use more than this and less than this what will happen otherwise it will stimulate lateral semicircular canal. So, there is a structure called lateral semicircular canal. I will show you when we discuss the anatomy of the middle ear, you will get to see this structure. And if you stimulate the lateral canal, if you disturb the lateral canal, the patient begins to have vertigo and nystagmus. So, the patient begins to have vertigo and nystagmus. Think about this, if you are not careful about the temperature, the patient starts having vertigo. So that's the reason. And the second thing is, what is the shape of the pinna? Remember, pinna is S shaped. So you have to make this pinna straight. And they ask you, how do you make the pinna straight? You have to pull the pinna. And the question is, which direction do you pull the pinna? This is another question. Pinna is pulled upwards. backwards and outwards. This is the direction of pinna, upwards, backwards and outwards. Upar, pichi or bahar ki taraf. So when you pull the pinna in this direction, in an adult, the canal becomes straight and now it is easier to do the syringing and remove the wax. Even foreign body, the same thing is done. So this slide that you see in front of you, about canal is a very important slide. Previous slide is less important, this is more important. So this is where they ask you a lot of questions. Then what is at the end of the tym canal? Tympanic membrane. So next thing we will talk about is tympanic membrane. If you have noticed, tympanic membrane lies at where? Tympanic membrane lies at the border of the external ear. Look at this, tympanic membrane is this. This is the tympanic membrane, isn't it? Where does it lie? It lies at the border of external ear and middle ear. So if it is at the border, who does it belong to? That becomes a question. It belongs to both. If you look at the outer surface of the tympanic membrane, it belongs to the external ear. And if you look at the inner surface of the tympanic membrane, it belongs to middle ear. It belongs to both. Right. And this is how a tympanic membrane looks like. So what are the questions they ask you about tympanic membrane? They ask you the shape, 
the color, the thickness, area and landmark. These are the five very common questions about tympanic membrane that you have to know and then after this we will talk about few more points. What is the shape? The shape is oval. The color is pearly white. Moti jaisa. Pearl is moti white. Pearly white. Some books call it grey. I know the MCQs books call it grey. But that is not your best answer. Best answer is pearly white. Always remember that. Okay. Thickness is very thin. 0 0.1 millimeter thick. Or itne make itne layers. How many layers? There are three layers in tympanic membrane. And together, you know, milake, it is just 0 0.1 millimeter. That means if you take 10 tympanic membranes and put them together, you get only 1 millimeter. And each of those 10 tympanic membrane has three layers. So 3 into 10 is 30 layers. This layer milake 1 millimeter banta. So you can imagine how thin are the layers. Then they ask you area. Now in area there are two questions. One is the total area and the other is effective area. Total area is 85 to 90 millimeter. This is the whole tympanic membrane. If you calculate the area, it comes out in adults, of course. It comes out to 85 to 90. But does the entire tympanic membrane vibrate? The answer is no. The part that vibrates is called effective area because that is useful for hearing. And that effective area is 45 to 55 millimeter square. Little more than half. Look, anything that nearly half of the tympanic membrane, little less than half, is useless. And this is true for most of the organs in the body. Upper wale ne aapko sab kuch extra diya hai. Tympanic membrane aapko 45, 55 chahiye. 85 de diya. We'll discuss vocal cord tomorrow. Same problem. Vocal cord, the whole thing is not used. 33% is not used. Even you know, I'm sure liver and kidneys, they are not used completely. Hai na? So, God has given you extra, extra. So, always be thankful to God. He has given you more than you need. And then we start complaining. Ki ye nahi mila, wo nahi mila. Hum sabse kam kya istamal karte? Jo par wale ne diya hai. Mere ko lehtan dimaag. Dimaag bhoot bada hai. 1.3 kg. I don't know how much of that we use. Mein to 10% bhi use nahi kar paata. Hai nahi. I don't know about you. But don't blame. What I mean is. And the last question is landmarks. The four landmarks. And because they are four names, they become important. One is called Handel of Malleus. H O M is short. So in future, whenever I have to write Handel of Malleus, I'll write H O M. Then Umbo. Lateral, lateral process, all these three are part of malleus. All these three are part of malleus, and there is fourth thing which is not a part of the malleus, cone of light. Don't worry, we will discuss all these structures. So, I will show you all these structures in the next diagram, so you will know this. Now, these are the, this is all that you have to know in tympanic membrane actually. So, not very difficult. Right. Okay. Uh, when I draw the oval shaped tympanic membrane, I draw it like this. And the handle of malleus is like this. This is HOM. The tip of the HOM is the umbo. See, I told you it is a part of the malleus. This is the landmark and can you see this bone projection? This is the lateral process. All three are part of malleus and all three are landmarks. Okay. Now, if you draw a line at the level of the lateral process like this, then tympanic membrane divided into two parts. 
the upper smaller part and the lower larger part obviously you can see this and these two parts have name the upper part is called pars flaccida and the lower part is called pars tensa तो ये दो पार्ट याद रखना है बट यू माइट आस्क कि एक ही टिम्पैनिक मेमरेंट है तो भला दो अलग अलग नाम क्यों रख दिया ए डी एस का भेदभाव क्यों हो रहा भाई एक्चुअली वेन यू एग्जामिन द टिम्पैनिक मेमरेंट लुक एट इट दिस टू पार्ट दे लुक डिफरेंट टेंसा पास टेंसा टेंसा मीन्स वॉट टाइट सो द लोअर पार्ट द बिगर पार्ट अपेयर वेरी टाइट मेमरी टेंसा इसलिए बोलते हैं क्योंकि देखने में टाइट लगता है टेंसा मीन्स टाइट And the smaller upper part is very loose. Loose means flaccid. So, देखने में tensa और flaccid अलग लगते हैं. That's why the names are different. But why do they look different? Because they look different because there is different in the anatomy. Slight difference in the anatomy, which we not go. I'm not going to go into. But just remember this that. they look different on vision because there is difference in the anatomy and therefore they have different names that's what you can remember and the last thing on the membrane you have to know there is a cone shaped area there is a cone from the umbo see this umbo you know there is a cone shaped area coming like this and this is the brightest part of the tympanic membrane brightest as like the light nikal ke aa नूर निकल रहा नूर कौन से पेरिया एंड बिकॉज द लाइट इज कमिंग कोन ऑफ लाइट दिस इज वॉट वाई इट इज कॉल्ड कोन ऑफ लाइट सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू नो ऑन द टिम्पैनिक ना और कोन ऑफ लाइट वी हैव टू नो इट इज अ लैंडमार्क दैट वी नो ऑलरेडी ना इट इज प्रेजेंट इन द एंट्रो इंफीरियर पार्ट ऑफ द टिम्पैनिक मेमरी इंफीरियर तो समझ में आ गया है ना नीचे है तो इंफीरियर हो गया बट इट इज एंटीरियरली सो रिमेम्बर दिस इट इज एंटोरो इंफीरियर पार्ट एंड इज फॉर्म बाय द अंबो यू कैन सी इट इज फॉर्म बाय द अंबो अंबो से निकल के आ रहा है सो इट्स नॉट इजी इट्स नॉट डिफिकल्ट इफ यू रिमेम्बर दिस डायग्राम कोन ऑफ लाइट के बारे में तीन बात इट्स द ब्राइटेस्ट पार्ट ऑफ द टिम्पैनिक मेम्बर इट्स अ लैंडमार्क ऑफ टिम्पैनिक मेम्बर इट्स प्रेजेंट इन द एंट्रो इंफीरियर क्वार्टर एंड इज फॉर्म बाई द अंबो so this is all that you have to know about the tympanic membrane right ab bagal mein jo image hai i'll point at the structures and you try to identify i'm sure you can easy ho gaya what is this whole thing handle of malleus what is this tip umbo what is this tip lateral process hai na aasan hai very easy Look at another image. What is this whole thing? Handle of malleus. What is this tip? Umbo. What is this bony projection? Lateral process. And I'm sure you know this now. That uh, this is cone of light. Huh? Na. So very good. Not visible in the corner means. i did not understand not visible in the corner okay okay theek hai theek hai got it uh because of me hai na my image is coming there so i'll write here cone of light cone of light is landmark of tympanic membrane bhul jata hu <laughs> i know this बट अलग अलग तरह से पढ़ाने में एंट्रो इंफीरियर इट इज लोकेटेड एंट्रो इंफीरियरली एंड इट इज फॉर्म बाई अम्बो ये थ्री फीचर्स ऑफ कोन ऑफ लाइट दैट वन मस्ट रिमेम्बर ठीक है डन एंड नाउ दिस कंप्लीट एक्सटर्नल ईयर पिन्ना कनाल एंड टिम्पैनिक में एक चीज रह गई है बट इज दैट वन थिंग नर्व सप्लाई एक्सटर्नल ईयर है सामनी नर्व फाइव नर्व बहुत सारे नाम है इतने नाम याद रखना बहुत मुश्किल है है ना
बट वेर एवर यू है मोर देन थ्री नेम्स इट बिकम्स इंपॉर्टेंट एम सी कहीं पर भी पूरा मेडिसिन में ये दिमाग में रख लो इफ यू मोर देन थ्री नेम्स इट इज ऑटोमेटिकली एम सी क्यू चाहे पांच है तो एम सी क्यू और एक लो टेम्पोरल आर्नोल्ड्स सेंसिव ब्रांच ऑफ फेशियल लेस ऑक्सीपिटल ग्रेटर ऑडिकुलर वेन यू अटेंड एनाटमी क्लास दिल टॉक अबाउट द लास्ट वन एनाटमी ऑफ पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से लास्ट वाले ग्रेटर ऑडिकुलर नर्व इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर दैम एनाटमिस्ट बट फ्रॉम द ई टी पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू आपको दो याद रखनी आर्नोल्ड्स एंड सेंसिव ब्रांच ऑफ फेशियल रिमेम्बर दिस टू आर्नोल्ड्स इज अ ब्रांच ऑफ वेगस टेंथ नर्व And I'm sure you know कि vagus is the longest nerve in your body, है ना Cranial nerve में से vagus is longest nerve, and that's why it is also called wanderer's nerve. Wanderer's nerve बोलते हैं vagus को बहुत दूर तलक जाती है. And it supplies your larynx, your heart, your lung, your diaphragm, your GI tract. Vagus सबसे supply होती है. Now, so if I ask you what is the connection? ENT में दो चीजें लैरिंग इज ई एन टी एंड ईयर इज ई एन टी सो इफ आई आस्क वट इज द कनेक्शन बिटवीन लैरिंग एंड एक्सटर्नल ऑडिटरी कनाल ईयर ईयर बोल दो कनेक्शन यू कैन से दे आर बोथ सप्लाइड बाई द सेम नर्व टेंथ नर्व वे गेस दैट द कनेक्शन ब्रांच अलग अलग है बट दे बोथ सप्लाइड बाई दस एज अ रिजल्ट वॉट हैपन्स कि एक में प्रॉब्लम होती है तो अदर वन फील्स द प्रॉब्लम सो इफ यूर प्रॉब्लम इन द लैरिंग्स योर ईयर माइट रिएक्ट एंड इफ योर ईयर हैज अ प्रॉब्लम योर लैरिंग्स माइट रिएक्ट सो दे आर कनेक्टेड दे लाइक फैमिली एक को तकलीफ होती है तो दूसरे को भी तकलीफ होती है जुड़वा होते हैं ना जुड़वा पिक्चर में एक को तकलीफ होती है तो दूसरे को भी तो वैसे आई है सो दैट्स वाई कनाल रिमेम्बर वी डू दिस सरेंजिंग इन द कनाल सरेंजिंग कुछ भी कनाल में करोगे ना तो पेशेंट स्टार्ट लैरिंग्स इट्स स्टिमुलेटेड एंड द पेशेंट स्टार्ट कॉफिंग खांसी शुरू हो जाती है दे आस्क यू दैट इफ यू क्लीन द कनाल खांसी क्यों होगी वाई कॉफिंग बिकॉज द कनेक्शन इज द सेम वेगस थ्रू आर नॉल्ड वट एवर है ना द रिवर्स इज टू कि लैरिंग्स एज अ ट्यूमर और इन्फ्लामेशन और इन्फेक्शन लैरिंग्स में तो पेन होगा ही ईयर में भी पेन होगा सेम कनेक्शन सो दिस इज वन नर्व दैट यू टू रिमेम्बर बिकॉज ऑफ दिस रीजन From the ENT point, they ask this question very commonly. And the second facial nerve, ki branch, we supply करती है. Why this? Because facial nerve is the most important cranial nerve from the ENT point. ENT point of view में से cranial nerve सबसे important nerve, सबसे important. तो इसके बिना तो काम चलता ही नहीं. So facial nerve का जहाँ पे भी नाम आता है, ENT में वो important हो जाता है. Simple. So sensory branch of the facial nerve is very important as far as ENT is concerned. and they don't discuss all these things in anatomy because from the anatomy point of view these are not important <clears throat> right now this completes the external ear fully pura ho gaya external ear so if you have any questions or doubts you can post it i will answer your questions from the external ear anatomy it's not too difficult and it is not very very important to jyada dimag lagane ki zarurat nahi isme because uh, questions are not very frequent to ask but the next part is very important मिडल ईयर उसमें दिमाग लगाना पड़ेगा उसको याद रखना पड़ेगा वो आप इग्नोर नहीं कर सकते इग्नोर तो इसको भी नहीं कर सकते बट उसको बिल्कुल नहीं कर सकते विच वन दिस पार्ट मिडल ईयर एनाटमी मिडल ईयर एनाटमी एज मेनी थिंग्स द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन दे आस्क यूज वट इज द शेप ऑफ मिडल ईयर मिडल इज मिडल ईयर इज डिस्क्राइब एज अ मैच बॉक्स मैच बॉक्स माचिस की डिब्बी या डब्बा बोल दो एक डब्बे की तरह है ना वाई डू वी कॉल मिडल ईयर लाइक अ बॉक्स बिकॉज एनी बॉक्स विल हैव सिक्स बाउंड्रीज है ना एक डब्बे में छह बाउंड्री होती है मिडल ईयर ऑल्सो सिक्स बाउंड्री लाइक अ बॉक्स इज कॉल लाइक अ बॉक्स सो मिडल ईयर हैज सिक्स बाउंड्रीज थ्री कंपार्टमेंट्स and three ossicles this is the main thing in the middle ear it has six boundaries three compartments and three ossicles if you know these three these things then you know middle ear anatomy that's all so it's not very difficult and moreover i'll make very simple for you 
सो इफ आई ड्रॉ मैच बॉक्स लाइक थिंग लेट से डबा तो ऐसे ही बनाते हैं है ना अब बॉक्स इज ड्रॉन लाइक दिस समथिंग लाइक दिस बॉक्स How many compartments? Three. How do you do three compartments? You draw two lines like this. You have three compartments: a upper one, upper compartment, a middle, a lower. And these three compartments have names, and you have to know the names. That's all. So upper compartment is called AP tympanum. Also called attic. <coughs> middle compartment is called mesotympanum and lower compartment is called hypotympanum epitympanum mesotympanum hypotympanum the three compartments of the middle ear So this is your first thing you have to know. Epitympanum is also called the attic, as you can see from the name. So I'll give you some times to draw. and three ossicles like this these are the three ossicles you know the three ossicles the first one is malleus this is malleus isn't it <coughs> this one is incus and this one is stapes malleus incus stapes are the three ossicles and this part is called the foot plate of stapes foot plate is actually the most important part of the ossicular chain when they ask you maximum number of questions from here foot plate and you already know ki foot plate does not develop from the branchial arches yeah the first slide mein bataya tha it develops from where without checking without cheating just write in the comment let's see how many of you remember ki foot plate develops from which which part where i'm waiting for your answer but don't look back cheating nahi karna be honest let's see how many of you remember that <coughs> ओटिक कैप्स है ना यू राइट अल्फा इज यू राइट ओटिक कैप्स यस किजू यू आर किटू यू आर राइट ओटिक कैप्सूल एब्सोल्युटली सो ग्लैड दैट यू गाइज नो वेरी गुड मोनिंग मोमिन कार कनेक्ट ओके एंड दिस इज टिम्पैनिक मेमोरी है ना कार्तिक करेक्ट दिस इज टिम्पैनिक मेमोरी ओके नाउ इफ यू थ्री जॉइंट्स यू हैव थ्री ऑसिकल्स इफ यू हैव थ्री ऑसिकल्स विल हैव टू जॉइंट्स वन जॉइंट इज दिस एंड वन जॉइंट इज दिस ऑब्वियसली फर्स्ट वन इज बिटवीन मैलिस एंड इनकस द सेकेंड वन इज बिटवीन इनकस एंड स्टेपीज एंड नाउ कम्स द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन दे आस्क यू फ्रॉम दट ossicles that what types of joints they are what type i'm sure if you have done i don't know whether you've done ortho or not in orthopedics they talk about types of joint joints have different types synovial joint has sub types so these both are synovial joints but they have different types of synovial joint the first one is saddle joint and the second one is ball and socket joint Okay, so these are the two joints: saddle joint and ball and socket joint. Ball and socket is a very important MCQ. Remember this: very, very important question. They ask it many times. But you 
पॉसिबिलिटी चेन इज नॉट सो बिग ये तो दिखाने के लिए एक्चुअल साइज ऑफ दिकल इज वेरी स्मॉल सी दिस गिव द सेंस द एक्चुअल साइज ऑफ दिकल कितने छोटे हैं लेकिन कितना बड़ा काम है वट इज द फंक्शन फंक्शन कैन एनी वेडी टेल मी द फंक्शन ऑफ द ऑसिकल्स राइट इन द कॉमेंट फंक्शन ऑफ द ऑसिकल्स लेट सी प्लीज राइट इन द कॉमेंट आई एम वेटिंग फॉर योर आंसर्स या इफ इज एम्प्लीफिकेशन दिस इज करेक्ट इज करेक्ट आंसर बट इफ यू से इम्पेन इज मैचिंग this is better answer both are correct both mean the same thing matlab dono ka same hi hai but impedance matching the second one is a better answer so if they ask you this question in the exam usually they'll give this this in the choice so look for this answer agar diya to correct otherwise you can go with amplification okay right so we know three ossicles their joints their functions their development we know the three compartments and now we'll talk about three boundaries a uh, six boundaries the most important thing so if i have to draw six boundaries i need this diagram i draw the canal pinna and inner ear <coughs> see if i add external ear and the inner ear to this diagram then starts making more sense better sense ha na so this is how it should be drawn ideally and this is very similar to the first diagram that we had drawn the only difference this time is that middle ear looks like a box otherwise it's the same thing so now tell me which is the outer boundary outer this is the outer boundary bahar ki taraf hai ऑल्सो कॉल्ड लैटरल बाउंड्री आउटर मीन्स लैटरल है ना एक्सटर्नल एरिया की तरफ तो भारी होगा द ऑपोजिट बिकम्स इनर बाउंड्री आल रिमूव दिस कॉकलिया एंड दिस बिकम्स यू इनर बाउंड्री विच इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड द मीडियल बाउंड्री वी नो दिस इनर को मीडियल बोलते हैं ना दिस बिकम्स यूर रूफ आई कैन कॉल इट सुपीरियर बाउंड्री रूफ इज सुपीरियर बाउंड्री एंड दिस बिकम्स द फ्लोर it becomes inferior boundary and there is the one in the front is anterior boundary so this is your anterior boundary the one in the front is the anterior boundary and the one behind this is the posterior boundary so which are the six boundaries outer inner upper lower anterior posterior six boundaries okay now out of six boundaries one boundary you already know Tell me which bound, which is the boundary that you already know. Actually, we have discussed one boundary. Which one? Out. Outer boundary, ये वाला, has to be tympanic membrane, because I told you tympanic membrane is like a border between the external ear and the middle ear, है ना? तो middle ear का outer boundary बन जाएगा. So this boundary is supposed to be like this, like a membrane. Handle of malleus, pars flexida, pars tensa. There is a cone of light like this, है ना? The landmarks and shape and we have discussed everything. तो इसकी बात करने की जरूरत ही नहीं है. So one wonder you already know. Roof has a name, and this name is a very important name. It's called tegmen tympani. And I'm writing M Q here means it's a very important M C Q. Tegmen tympani is the name of the roof of the ear. It's a very important M C Q. below the floor there are two things one there is a ninth nerve glossopharyngeal nerve now this ninth nerve sends a branch to the floor and the branch is called jacobson's nerve and jacobson's nerve enters the ear through the floor ye floor se andar hoti hai isliye it is important here and after entering the ear इट फॉर्म्स ए प्लेक्सेस प्लेक्सेस इज नेटवर्क स्प्रेड होकर एक नेटवर्क बन जाता है पूरे ईयर को सप्लाई करने के लिए वेर इज द प्लेक्सेस मिडिल ईयर वट इज मिडिल ईयर कॉल्ड टिम्पैनम याद है टिम्पैनम है मिडिल का नाम दैट्स वाई दिस प्लेक्सेस कॉल्ड टिम्पैनिक प्लेक्सेस 
tympanic plexus right so this is same thing ye teen naam aap dekh rahe hain ek hi hai ninth na bol do if i ask and this is the nerve supply of the middle ear like i told you so if i ask you which nerve supplies the middle ear all the three are correct answer you can say ninth na you can say jacobson's na you can say tympanic membrane jo bhi choice mein diya hoga is the correct answer tympanic membrane is the best answer okay tympanic membrane is the best answer and the last thing you have to know in the floor is the <coughs> below the floor the second thing actually is a jugular vein so there is a vein here and that vein is the jugular vein i hope this name is not hiding behind me jugular vein theek hai so how many boundaries we know we know roof we know floor we know outer boundary teen ho gaye teen reh gaye inner boundary ke bare mein ek baat inner boundary which is medial boundary is not straight like this it is bulging like this bulge hai so inner boundary is bulging so right in the center of the inner boundary there is a bulge as a bulge and this bulge has a name it's called promontory so this is also mcq what is the bulge on the medial wall called the bulge on the medial wall is called promontory promontory right so char boundary hogi kitne bach gaye do boundary so we'll discuss the next two boundaries which is the most which are the two boundaries left to be discussed anterior boundary and posterior boundary and these two boundaries are the most important boundaries to be discussed i'm having a little bit of nausea <coughs> so please bear with me actually i'm sick for this is my fourth day i'm sick i'm fever constant fever more than 110 i was on bed i have uti i have gi ag acute gastroenteritis fever fever is not going so i'm taking medicine every 4 or 5 hours the comiflam or paracetamol so i might not look very fresh i'm sure you can make out that i'm not looking very fresh that's because i'm not well but i'll try to do my best don't worry i'll teach i'll teach everything don't worry i'll do my best and nausea yeah nausea <coughs> so now tell me if you examine from outside if you examine from outside which boundary do you get to see you can see the tympanic membrane isn't it wo hi dikhega samne imagine karo aapne tympanic membrane ko hata diya there is no tympanic membrane now only five boundaries left now if you see from outside right in front of you will be the inner wall with a bulge called promontory hai na aur upar roof hai there is a floor below on one side there is anterior wall one side there is posterior wall if you open this walls opens this wall like a box if you have a box of six boundaries and you remove one boundary tympanic membrane outer boundary five are left and if you open the box can we draw open box like this look at the box that we i'm showing you and i've tried to draw the similar diagram next to it hai na so clearly this is roof ah this is roof this is floor let's say this is anterior wall this is posterior wall and this is medial or inner wall and lateral wall is out gone panch boundary so we have done roof we have done floor properly hai na iske bare mein jo bhi jana tha hame pata hai medial wall we know one thing there is a bulge here in the center there is a bulge like this and the name of the bulge is i'm writing a p it stands for promontory now we'll have to talk about the anterior wall and the posterior wall mainly and both these walls are very 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 important so first we'll talk about anterior wall anterior wall 
Now, anteval of the ear is important because it has two openings. There is a small opening at the top and a larger opening below that. This small opening is called canal for tensor tympani muscle. Canal for tensor tympani muscle. This is the only thing you have to know about this canal, Nam iska, or the fact that it is on the anterior wall. But from the name, you can understand that a muscle is coming through this, right? a muscle comes through this, and the muscle is called tensor tympani muscle. And this larger opening is the eustachian tube opening. Eustachian tube opening. Now, I told you that canal for tensor tympani, the only thing you have to know is the name and the fact that it is present on the anterior wall of the middle ear. But station tube is very important, very important. It is made 5 to 6 MCQ, 5 to 6 MCQs, potential questions. And from the name, I understand it is a tube. It is a tube, hai na? So, if a tube hai, so, tube will have two ends, there are two ends as I have shown in the image, one end is opening on the anterior wall of the middle ear, where does the other end of the station tube open? The other end of the station tube opens on the lateral wall of nasopharynx, lateral wall of nasopharynx. Now, you might ask, where is nasopharynx? Nasopharynx is a pharynx behind the nose. Naak ke piche wala pharynx. So, if I draw the pharynx like this, let us say this whole posterior column is pharynx. Ye pura apka pharynx hai. The whole thing is pharynx. Okay. It is a very big area. And it is divided into three parts like this. If I draw two lines, one line here and one line here, see there are three parts. They all have names. This part of the pharynx, which is behind the nose, is nasopharynx. Of course, we will discuss pharynx tomorrow in details, so you will know more about this. Right. And the station tube opens here like this. This is your station tube. Oh, this is how it looks on the nasopharynx. This is how it opens. Now, this end of the station tube has a bulge like this. There is a bulge like this. And this bulge has a name. What is it called? Torus tubaris. So, if I use torus tubaris as a bulge on the nasopharynx end of the eustachian tube. Remember this name, very important name, very important MCQ. So, remember this. So, if I use this diagram, there is a bulge here and this bulge is called torus tubaris in the nasopharynx end. That is how you remember. Right. So, what are the other important points of you have to know about eustachian tube? Uh, the length of the tube, length is 36 millimeters. Do you remember the length of the canal, external artery canal? If you remember, it was 24 millimeters and this is 36. How I used to remember, I used to think, because confusion hota, bahut sari value yaad mein, I used to think 12 into 2, 12 into 3. Canal is 12 into 2, this is 12 into 3. That is how I used to remember. Now, canal has a bony part and a cartilage part. This also has a bony part and a cartilage 
बट उलता है द रिवर्स इन दिस आउटर वन थर्ड इज बोनी एंड इनर टू थर्ड इज कार्टिलेज If you remember, canal had the opposite fat. In canal, out of one third is cartilage, inner two third is bony. Station tube, out of one third is bony, inner two third is cartilage. And there is a bulge called torus tubaris. This we know already, है ना? Torus tubaris lies in the nasopharynx end of the station tube. You know this already. What is it formed due to? Why do we have this bulge? This bulge is due to a muscle called tensor. Valley, palatine muscle. This muscle is responsible for formation of that bulge. So a muscle is attached here. A muscle called tensor valley palatine is attached to the station tube here in this end, and that causes a bulge in the nasopharynx. The bulge is called tensor valley palatine. And if you notice the name of this muscle, is a muscle of the palate, soft palate. Tensor of the palate. So this palatal muscle is also attached to the eustachian tube. Palate or eustachian tube का बहुत गहरा रिश्ता है. Just remember that. Palate or eustachian tube का बहुत गहरा रिश्ता है. They very close related because of this muscle. So whenever you have palate problem, eustachian tube tends to have problem. But the main thing the eustachian tube you have to know is the function. the function of the station tube station tube has two main functions one is called balance the pressure of the middle ear and second is drainage of secretions from middle ear most of you know this ha right? na what is the meaning of these two words बैलेंस दी प्रेशर इन द मिडिल ईयर ड्रेन ऑफ सिक्रेशन मिडिल में जो हवा होती है द एयर ऑफ द मिडिल ईयर गेट्स यूज अप बाय द टिश्यूज दे नीड ऑक्सीजन ना ऑक्सीजन गेट यूज अप तो एयर प्रेशर गोज डाउन नेगेटिव प्रेशर होना शुरू होता है सो यू नीड फ्रेश एयर सो द ओनली रूट टू एंटर द मिडिल ईयर इज द स्टेशन टू स्टेशन टू में जाने का और कोई रास्ता है ही नहीं स्टेशन टू इज ओनली रास्ता सो एयर गोज थ्रू दैट एंड मिडिल इज कैविटी सो इट हैज लॉट ऑफ सिक्रेशन Like you have secretion in the nose, you have secretion in the sinuses, you have secretion in the mouth, saliva. Similarly, ear also has secretion. अब secretion बनना तो कहीं निकलना पड़ेगा उसको, so it goes out of the station tube. Drainage of secretion. That's why station tube is also called drain of middle ear. We call it drain of middle ear. The point is that in the station tube, something is already always entering. and something is always coming out air is entering and secretion is coming out hai na like i said this is the only route through which something can go in and out now if something has to go in and something has to go out we understand the station tube has to remain open for that close tube se to koi jayega aayega nahi so that's what happens the tube opens But sometimes, due to some disease, the station tube closed permanently for few days. Because disease ho gaya, nasal pharynx may usually either nasal pharyngitis or tumor or adenoid, whatever. We'll discuss all that later on when we talk about pharynx. We'll discuss more of this. But if the tube gets blocked, no air can go inside, no secretion can come out, no balancing will happen, no drainage will happen. So there is no balancing. then there is negative pressure in the middle ear the air that is already inside is being used up bahar se hawa ja nahi rahi to negative pressure banta rahega and the secretion which is building up which is collect which is formed inside is not coming out so there is collection start collecting so these are the two things that happens there is negative pressure in the middle ear and this collection of secretions in the middle ear now negative pressure causes two things it causes a barrow trauma b is causes retraction of tympanic membrane 
two three day. And for collection, it will get infected. And infection of the middle ear is called otitis media. Right. So these are the three problems that will arise if your station tube gets blocked. Barrow trauma and retraction pocket due to negative pressure and otitis media due to collection of secretions. So what you have to remember are the three problems that can arise due to station tube function or block it. This function of the station tube you can see. Right. So this completes the important point about eustachian tube and heart. And this also completes the anterior wall of the middle ear. So see there are so many points to remember in eustachian tube. I told you in the beginning, station tube may panse question when they length, bony part, cartis part, torus to barriers, kiss wajasi hai, torus to barriers, then functions, then problems, everything is important. <coughs> now, otite is media, this one. Otitis media is a very important topic of ear. It's very important. The most important topic actually. Most important topic. And to complete otitis media, it takes two hours, maybe more sometimes. This is called details. So we'll do this later on. So we'll ignore it now. The rest of the two I'll tell you briefly now. These two I'll tell you briefly. Now barrow trauma. Obviously, barrow means pressure. Pressure due to sudden uh, trauma due to sudden change of pressure is called barrow trauma. Trauma due to sudden change of pressure is called barrow trauma. Simple. And when do we experience this mainly? We experience barrow trauma mainly in flights. Kabi hua apka flight me kaan bandho jata hai? That is barrow trauma. Barrow trauma causes the ear blocker in the flights. And we don't worry because we know that a little pressure maintain ho jayega, balance ho jayega, tatti ho jayega. Right? right. And retraction of the tympanic membrane. For retraction of the tympanic membrane, I will go back to this diagram. See, I have shown you the yellow, uh, blue thing is the tympanic membrane. Right? Then there is malleus, then there is incus, then there is tapis. Or last me, Foot plate of the step is there will be a promontory here, and there will be a bulge like this, which is promontory, inner wall. Promontory. So, when there is a station tube block and the pressure becomes negative, negative pressure. What does negative pressure do? What does negative pressure do? It pulls anything that is there, it, negative pressure always pulls. So, what will get pulled? The tympanic membrane. So, a tympanic membrane from here gets pulled here. It goes from here to here. It will sift. And this is called retraction of tympanic membrane. And if you don't treat the tympanic membrane retraction and the station to block it for few days, or the negative pressure hoga, or the retraction, it will come here. Now it comes here to here. Because the pressure is building up negative and negative, more pressure, more force of pull. And if you still don't treat, it will come to the promontory like this. Here. So, retraction of tympanic membrane. has grades. You can see the first one is grade 1, the second one is grade 2, third one is grade 3 like this. Has four grades. Has four grades. Grade and this no. This grading is called done by a person called SAD said and this is MCQ. This is MCQ. Okay. So, who did the grading of tympanic membrane retraction to 4 grade? The name is SAD, SAID. Some people pronounce it as SADE, some call it SAID. Uh, Kitu, I will talk about barrow trauma. Let me complete this. Okay. 
So retraction of tympanic membrane has four grades. Let's say let's say this is grade one, this is grade two, and this is grade three. So if you notice, you don't have to know this. I'm just telling you. Okay, don't think you are not understanding. Doesn't matter. I'll just tell you. If you can understand and remember, it is well and good. If not, don't bother. Then don't ask this. Grade one, if you notice, see normally the tympanic membrane touches the malleus. It doesn't touch the incus tapes or promontory. In grade one, as you see, I've drawn like this. It is retracted, but it's still not touching the incus or tapes. Grade one is not touching the incus or the semi. Can you see that? So that's grade one. Right, grade one. Grade two. It is touching the incus and the stapes, but not the promontory. And grade three will touch the promontory, or grade four will promontory will touch the promontory, adherent to the promontory. Grade three will touching the promontory, grade four adherent out to the promontory. So, like I said, if you can remember well and good, otherwise don't bother yourself. Grade two, yeah, that's necessary. Grade two is when it touches incus and stapes. Only that means only means not promontory. Promontory को छेड़ने से grade three हो जाएगा. Okay. So these are the points about retraction of tympanic membrane. The two things याद रखनी है इसमें. एक तो name of the person S A D S A. This question has been asked in the exam. I've written M Q there. And grade two is important because this has been asked in your exam already. Right. So this is retraction of the tympanic membrane. The other thing that happens with negative pressure is barrow trauma. Somebody was asking, "What is barrow trauma?" Barrow means pressure. Trauma is of course trauma. So trauma in the ear due to sudden change of pressure is called barrow trauma. Simple. अगर बाहर का pressure suddenly change होगा, तो barrow trauma जाएगा. और बाहर का pressure कब change होता है? If you are in the house, on the ground, on the earth, the outside pressure then usually does not change too much. But in the flights, you are sitting in the flight and the flight suddenly goes down and it goes up. So there is sudden change of pressure inside the flight, and that causes trauma because uh, uh, eustachian tube takes time to uh, balance. It cannot balance instantly. As a as a balance, no, the attack. No, it takes two, three, four minutes. Sometimes up to ten minutes it takes to balance. So, jab tak balance nahi hoga, trauma ho gaya, kaan band. So, what is the problem now? What is the complaint? Ear block. So that's called barrel trauma. And I'm sure everybody has experienced this in the flight once in a while. ज़्यादा लोगों को कभी न कभी होता ही है। हमेशा नहीं होता, कभी-कभी होता, है ना? So that's called barrow trauma. And barrow trauma, they ask you, when is it more common? When the flight is coming down, descending, that is, or when is the flight is going up, ascending? And the answer is barrow trauma is more common when the flight is descending. When it is coming down, that time the barrow trauma is more, not when it is ascending so much. So we know barrow trauma, we know retraction. Otitis media will discuss later on. So this completes the anterior wall of the middle ear. Done. Okay, station two especially. Now we'll discuss medial wall, inner wall, medial wall, which is inner wall. सामने वाला One thing on the middle wall, we know there is a bulge here. What is this bulge called? Promontory. है ना? We know this already. Actually, our promontory को touch करने से grade three हो जाता है. We know this also. चिपक जाएगा already तो grade four हो जाता है. We know this also. Right. <coughs> And actually, there is one more bulge. There are two bulges. I should write bulges. But I'll not write bulges. Do it to bulge. Plural again. I'll write bulge. Space ki problem hai. So I'll write bulge. So don't think he sir ko angrezi nahi aati. There are two windows. So I'll write window. And there are two more things. Add it kar do.
<laughs> ये अच्छा तरीका नितिन याद रखने का भैरव ट्रोमा मैच होता है ना नितिन सिंह भैरा करने वाला ट्रोमा <laughs> याद रखने का अच्छा तरीका वेरी गुड नितिन गुड गुड सो इनर वॉल में यू कैन रिमेम्बर द रूल ऑफ थ्री टू 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 दैट्स हाउ यू रिमेम्बर इट इज इजी वन बल्च यू नो इज प्रोमांट्री है ना सेकेंड इज बल्च ऑफ लैटरल सेमी सर्कुलर कना सेकेंड इज अ बल्च ऑफ लैटरल सेमी सर्कुलर कना and where is this present look at the image in the top corner i'll draw this is how a bulge of the lateral semicircular drawn in your image aise banate hai usko bulge of the lateral semicircular top corner have you heard this name before yes syringing me syringing for wax wax me syringing tha and syringing me temperature 37 degree lete hai same as body temperature hai na my body temperature today is 101 102 and i'm feeling shivering now so i'll take to, i'll have to take the medicine so uh this gets stimulated if you use a water less than 37 degree or more than 7, 37 degree then this gets stimulated lateral sinusoidal canal and if you stimulate the lateral canal anything not only temperature if you do surgery here if there is a trauma here if there is disease here patient will have vertigo and nystagmus vertigo and nystagmus i'm sure you know we'll discuss this vertigo and nystagmus and all that later on but you know vertigo means chakkar aana the head spins and nystagmus the eyeball moves left right left right left right nystagmus right so nystagmus because of thalis already run for you so you know what is nystagmus i'm sure okay so think about this you are doing the syringing in the patient the patient begins to have vertigo and nystagmus it's not a good thing to happen that's why we are careful about the temperature then we have two windows everybody knows those two windows one is oval window one is round window Obviously, you must have understood shape. Why is it such a name? A oval shape, a oval window. That is round in shape, round window. Now remember that both these windows are behind the promontory, near the posterior wall. They are on the medial wall, but near the posterior wall. One is above the promontory, one is below the promontory. Which one is above the promontory? If I draw one like this, and I draw another one like this, you can well make out what I am trying to draw. Huh? Right? The upper one is oval window. I've drawn oval shape, and the lower one is round window because I've drawn round shape. So upper is oval window, lower is round window. <coughs> two windows, and see they are very close to the posterior wall as I said. And then two more things. What are two more things? The seventh nerve, which is called the facial nerve. Seventh nerve, facial nerve. I told you ENT me seventh nerve is very important, and there is something called Fistula ante fenestra. Fistula ante fenestra. It's two more things. Fistula means fistula. So there is a small fistula. Where is this fistula? This fistula lies in front of the oval window. So if you can see the oval window here, is a fistula here. A small fistula. The arrow is showing you, and this fistula is called fistula ante fenestra. And there is a facial nerve, and the facial nerve runs above the promontory, oval window, sorry, and goes to the posterior wall, and then comes down and out of the ear. This red line that I've drawn is your facial nerve. So, see, facial nerve medial wall me to hota hi hai. It goes to the posterior wall also. It turns, it turns ke, it goes downwards, and then from the lower end of the posterior wall, it comes out of the ear. So, this is your medial wall of middle ear. The rule of two, 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 two bulge. two windows two more things now there are two more points here round window is covered by a membrane this is mcq covered by a membrane called secondary tympanic membrane this is mcq what covers the round window secondary tympanic membrane and fistula ante fenestra is important because it is the most common site of a very important disease called otosclerosis this is another mcq okay so these two points are very important that the round window is covered by a membrane called secondary tympanic membrane and 
site of autosclerosis is fistula antifenestra, the most common site actually. And both are very important MCQs. Uh, autosclerosis is a very important disease. Ye bhi bhot important disease hai. We'll do today in the evening. And then I'll ask you this question, which is the most common site. So you should be able to tell me autosclerosis is the most common site is fistula antifenestra. So remember that. So this completes the medial wall also. Next, posterior wall. Actually, posterior wall is the most important thing, wall. And one thing in the posterior wall you already know is the fascia nerve like this. And this is the seventh nerve on the posterior wall. From the medial wall, it, the fascia nerve comes from the posterior wall. We know this already. It is going downwards and it is coming out of the ear. So there has to be a foramen here. This foramen through which the fascia comes out is called the stylo. Stylo mastoid foramen. So this name is very important. Stylo mastoid. So fascia nerve. comes out of ear through stylo mastoid foramen. Stylo mastoid foramen. Right. So, lower part of the posterior wall has stylomaster foramen, the upper part has a door. There is a door here like this and this door is called aditus. So, this is your aditus. So, these are less important things, facial nerve, stylomaster foramen, aditus and all that. There are three things which are very, very important. So, we are coming to the most important names on the posterior wall. One is a bony projection called pyramid is a bony projection and you must have guessed why the name is pyramid. The shape of this bone is like a pyramid. So, the name is pyramid. Then there are two areas. One is called sinus tympani. ST and facial recess. FR. ST and FR, ST is sinus tympani, FR is facial recess. So, pyramid is a small bone at the junction, where the turn of the facial nerve. Can you see the facial nerve is turning below that? There is a bony projection here and this bony projection is the pyramid. But why is pyramid important? Pyramid is important because a muscle called stapedius, muscle originates from here, arises from here. So, a muscle arises from here and this muscle is called stapedius muscle. And that is why pyramid is so important because the stapedius muscle arises from here. So, pyramid is not important, the muscle is important. So, we will talk about the muscle in a little while. And these two names, next two names, sinus tympani and facial recess, STFR, they are on either side of the facial nerve. Can you see the facial nerve? One side has sinus tympani, the other side is facial recess. Sinus tympani is here, ST. This side is sinus tympani. And this side, FR, is facial recess. So, sinus tympani is close to the medial wall, isn't it? Sinus tympani is close to the medial wall and the other side is facial recess. These are all the things on the posterior wall, the names that you have to know. We will discuss three things. We will discuss stapedius muscle, we will discuss sinus tympani 
and we will discuss facial traces. These are the names that we will discuss. Let us start with stapedius muscle. Now, stapedius muscle, as you all know, originates from pyramid in posterior wall. So, if pyramid is not given, posterior wall is the correct answer. The nerve supply is facial nerve, and prosomy facial nerve, so masic branch. So, if you look at this diagram, from here a branch will go and a supply, very easy. Now comes the main thing, what is the function of stapedius muscle? Function, this is important, any idea? So please write in the comment, let us see, it is a very important MCQ, what is the function of stapedius muscle? Let us see, please write in the comment, function of stapedius muscle is I am waiting for you guys to write the correct answer. It is called dampen the loud sound. What is the meaning of dampen? To make it less loud. So, if the sound, yeah, correct, alphas, correct. Alpha is Rami alpha is uh, it dampens the loud sound. Yeah. Dampen means it decreases the loudness of the sound. You also write Kitu, you are right, Kitu is also right. How does it do this? This is done by producing stapedial reflex, which is also called acoustic reflex. So, this is what you have to know that this muscle produces a reflex and the reflex is either called the stapedial reflex because it is produced by the stapedial muscle, also called the acoustic reflex and what does this reflex do? This reflex, reflex will dampen the loud sound, very very important, remember this. Now, every reflex has an afferent nerve and an efferent nerve. So, can you tell me the afferent nerve of the stapedial reflex and the efferent nerve in the stapedial reflex? The afferent nerve is the eighth nerve and the efferent nerve is the seventh nerve. This is MCQ, right? Which means that for a normal reflex, you need at least these three things. What are the three things you need? You need the stapedius muscle, you need the eighth nerve. And you need the seventh nerve. Tino chi. It means a kuch bhi garbare. Anything is damaged, you cannot have a reflex. And if you do not have a reflex, that condition is called hyperacusis. Hyperacusis means stapedial reflex is absent. This is the meaning of the word hyperacusis, that the stapedial reflex is absent. Whatever could be the cause, maybe there is a problem in the stapedial reflex, maybe seventh nerve, maybe eighth nerve. Okay. So, these are the points about stapedius muscle and its function, and this everything is important here. So, I told you pyramid is not important. Pyramid is important because of the reflex, isn't it? The prime minister or the chief minister, they are important because of the chair they hold. As a person, they are useless. They are like any person like you and me. The chair they hold that gives them the importance. Same is here. Pyramid is important because it has the muscle which does a very important function, dampens the loud sound. And why do we need to dampen the loud sound? Because this will, loud sound can damage the inner ear. So, in a way it is protecting your inner ear, is protection of the inner ear. And finally, those two terms, facial recess and sinus nipple. So, we will make column, we will make three columns, we will make facial recess, If sinus tympani, uh, 
And whenever I discuss these two names on the positive wall, I discuss one more thing called prosaic space. Now, prosaic space, please note, is not on the posterior wall. Prosaic space is related to the tympanic membrane. But this is also a space. All three are spaces, and there are three important spaces in the middle here. That's why I talk of them, these three together. So, must not think that this prosaic space has come Okay. It is just odd man out. It is present on the tympanic membrane, prosaic space. Now, facial recess, you have to know three boundaries. One, two, three boundaries. That's it. One boundary is facial nerve. Obviously, on one side of the prosaic space is the facial nerve. Second boundary is corda tympani nerve. Now, corda tympani nerve is a very popular branch of the facial nerve. This is also a branch of the facial nerve. About this, we will discuss a little later. Today, at me, we will discuss this about this. But it is a very important nerve of the middle ear. And the third boundary is short process of incus. Incus can be, remember, malleus has parts, handle of malleus, umbo, lateral process. Incus also has parts. One part of the incus is called short process of incus. And this forms a boundary of the facial recess. And this is MCQ. They ask you the boundaries of the facial recess. So remember this. facial nerve, corda tympani nerve and short process of incus. Sinus tympani you do not have to know the boundary. Sinus tympani you have to know the importance. Why is it important? Sinus tympani is important because surgery cannot be done here. You cannot do a surgery here. Surgery cannot be done here. That means even if you have a disease, if you have a disease in the sinus tympani, even if you do surgery, it will remain there. It will be stuck there. So after the surgery, this disease is still there. What is it called? It's called recurrence of disease. Right? Sometimes called residual disease. So, if they ask you which part of the middle ear the recurrence or residual disease is very common, you know the answer. The part of the ear where recurrence and residual disease is common is the sinus tympani. So remember that, very, very important. Ek me boundary, ek me importance. In third, both. You have to know boundary as well as importance. So, the three boundaries again in Prusak space. One is lateral malleolar fold. One boundary is lateral malleolar fold. Second boundary is neck of malleus. And third boundary is pars flaccida. And you know pars flaccida is a part of tympanic membrane. So, if somebody says tympanic membrane, it is okay because pars flaccida is a part of tympanic membrane. So, three boundaries, lateral malleolar fold, neck of malleus and pars flaccida. And then importance. It is the most common site of a very popular disease called cholestatoma. I am writing a cholestatoma. So, if I ask you which is the commonest site of cholestatoma, then <coughs> prosaic space is the commonest site of cholestatoma. Prosaic space is the most. Cholestatoma is a disease we will discuss with otitis media. When we will discuss otitis media, we will talk about this disease cholestatoma. So, you will know about this disease later on. But I will ask you which is the most common site of cholestatoma. You should be able to tell me prosaic space is the most common site of cholestatoma. Okay, will you remember? Okay, so these are the three spaces in the neck, in the ear, two in the posterior wall, one on the tympanic. See, one of the boundaries of prosaic space is pars flaccida. So obviously that proves that tympanic membranes are related. Right? 
so that's a logical thing okay what is stapedial reflex see there are many reflexes in the body reflexes hote hain body mein if somebody throws a stone at you koi cheez aapki taraf aa rahi hai you don't even think your body just reacts hai na aap jhuk jate ho aap sochte ki mere ko jhukta hai jaise kuch aaya aapke body apne jhukti hai so kaise jhukti hai bina dimag nahi lagi isme dimag nahi lagta ye spinal level pe hota hai spinal level pe isko reflex bolte hain so reflex mein cortex use nahi hota जब गाड़ी चलाते हो तो यू आर लिसन टू द सॉन्ग यू आर थिंकिंग और समथिंग अपने आप कुछ सामने आ गया तो आपका ब्रेक लग जाता है आप लगा देते हो यू डोंट थिंक यार कोई आ रहा है मेरे को ब्रेक लगाना अपने आप लगता है है ना रिफ्लेक्स है वो इस तरह से आंख के सामने कुछ आता आपकी आंख अपने आप बंद हो जाती है वो रिफ्लेक्स है सो बॉडी हैज मेनी रिफ्लेक्स थ्री एग्जाम्पल आई गेव यू हर रिफ्लेक्स का एक ही काम है प्रोटेक्ट करना प्रोटेक्ट करना आपने मैंने दिन एग्जाम दे किसी ना किसी को प्रोटेक्ट करता है है ना तो ये भी एक रिफ्लेक्स स्टेपिल रिफ्लेक्स दिस आल्सो प्रोटेक्ट्स यू बट प्रोटेक्ट्स यू फ्रॉम हु इट प्रोटेक्ट्स यू फ्रॉम लाउड साउंड कोई भी तेज आवाज आती बहुत तेज तो तेज आवाज इनर ईयर में जाने से इनर ईयर डैमेज हो जाता है कॉकलिया इनर ईयर में कॉकलिया होता है विल डिस्कस नेक्स्ट आफ्टर दिस इनर ईयर कॉकलिया सो इफ द कॉकलिया किट्स डैमेज कॉकलिया गया तो सब गया कान बेकार यू कान डू कॉकलिया के नॉट बी ट्रीटेड एंड यू कॉन्ट हियर सो so, ऊपर वाले ने एक नेचर ने एक प्रोटेक्शन डाल दिया ईयर में कि जब भी तेज आवाज होगी आपके एक रिफ्लेक्स पैदा होगा और वो आवाज को कम कर देगा तो कम करना मतलब डैम्पिन डैम्पिन द लाउड साउंड एंड इफ दैट साउंड इज बिकम लेस लाउड कम हो गया तो फिर सेफ साउंड अब वो कहीं भी इन एरिया में कहीं भी जाए इट इज नॉट डेंजरस सो दिस इज द फंक्शन ऑफ द स्टीपिल रिफ्लेक्स ऑल्सो कॉल ए कॉस्टिक रिफ्लेक्स कि जब भी तेज आवाज आती है उसको कम करता है डैम्पेन करता है ताकि आपका कॉकलिया प्रोटेक्ट रहे ओके ये कॉकलिया के रिमेन्स प्रोटेक्टेड ऑल द टाइम सो दिस इज द फंक्शन ऑफ स्टेपिल रिफ्लेक्स हैव यू गॉट इट ना एवरी रिफ्लेक्स दैट आई मेंशन वेदर इट इज दैट रिफ्लेक्स वेयर योर बॉडी गोज डाउन और वेदर रिफ्लेक्स वेन द स्टोन कम्स एट यू आईज एंड यू आईज ब्लिंग्स और दैट यू स्लैम द ब्रेक वेन यू ड्राइविंग अ कार एवरी रिफ्लेक्स विल हैव एटलीस्ट वन एफरेंट नाम इट मे बी मोर देन वन and at least one efferent nerve and in stapedial reflex there is one afferent nerve and one efferent so i told you afferent nerve is the eighth nerve and efferent nerve is the seventh nerve which means if you want to have a normal stapedial reflex you need three things what are the three things you need you need a stapedius muscle you need facial nerve you need eighth nerve ha na It's very logical. Now, if any of the three is damaged, paralyzed, or whatever, then the reflex cannot happen because the reflex needs. And if the reflex is absent, it is not there. That condition that is an abnormality, and that abnormality, that condition is called hyperacusis. Hyperacusis. So I hope. So hyperacusis is a stapedial reflex is absent. I hope this clarifies. Okay. I hope this clarifies everything that you need to done, and this will complete everything to do about middle ear. We have done three compartments, three articles, and six boundaries. Everything, and I told you in the beginning that middle ear anatomy is the most important anatomy you have to know. But middle ear is never complete if you don't mention the mastoid also, mastoid, which is behind the ear. So if I use this diagram, see, look at this diagram. I'm sure you can identify this diagram. You can make out the middle ear, and you can identify the structures also very easily. Behind the middle ear, this is your mastoid. Mastoid. And mastoid has cells. These are air cells of the mastoid. So mastoid is very cellular. It's very cellular, and this is the largest cell of the mastoid. and the largest cell of the mastoid has a name it's called antrum this is mcq what is the largest mastoid air cell called antrum is a very popular very simple question and it is connected to the middle ear so you can see in the front there is middle ear all the five boundaries you can see mastoid behind that behind the posterior boundary you can make out and this whole structure has a common name do you know what is the common name for this whole structure middle ear with mastoid has a common name it's called middle ear cleft so remember this 
middle ear cleft is the common name for the entire thing. So remember that. In this middle ear cleft, we have discussed everything already, which is essentially middle ear. We have done this already, except antrum. We have not discussed the antrum. So if I discuss the antrum also, if I discuss the antrum also, this will complete the entire middle ear cleft. And antrum, you need to know just four points only. One you know already, which is the one that you know already is the largest cell of the master. I just told you, huh? Largest cell. Second point they ask you, mass, uh, antrum is deep to this bone. If you go inside this bone, you'll en encounter the antrum. The question is how deep is the master antrum? This is an MCQ. 12 to 15 millimeters deep. Master antrum lies 12 to 15 millimeters deep means 1.2 to 1.5 centimeter deep. Third point, remember we discussed corner septum. Corner septum is actually present in the mastoid antrum. Okay, how many of you remember what is corner septum? Just write in the comment. Let's see. How much? Uh, what is co corner septum? We have done this, so you should be knowing this. Yeah, alpha is, Rami alpha is correct. Petrus comma suture, remember in the beginning of the day we started, I told you this. So yeah, correct. Corner septum is petrus comma suture, it is present in master antrum. And the last question is the most important question. This is also important, MC, but the last one is more important. Landmark for master antrum. This is a very, very, very important. There are two names, same thing, two names. It's either called Mac Evans triangle or it's called supra meatal triangle. McEwen's triangle or supra meatal triangle is a landmark for mastoid antrum. So there are the five points about mastoid that you need to know. Okay. So now we complete, you can see the middle ear cleft. Now we have completed the middle ear cleft. If you have any questions and this is the most important part of anatomy of ear. So if you have any questions or doubt please ask me now. Any question or doubt please ask me now. Yeah. Okay. So we will talk about last part which is the last part. The inner ear. What is inner ear also called? Remember the name? Labyrinth. This is the last part, labyrinth. And I told you already in the beginning that labyrinth is less important compared to middle ear and the mastoid, isn't it? But it's not that it is not important. It may be less important, but it has importance. Now, labyrinth has two functions. What are the two functions? of labyrinth. Uh, let me go back to this diagram, the bone and I will show you the McEwen triangle. McEwen triangle is this triangular area. See this is the, this is the temporal bone if you remember. In this temporal bone, this is the canal external auditory canal. Remember canal has bony part and cartilage part. Outer is cartilage, inner is bone. So the cartilage has been removed. So this is the bony part of the canal. And just above the bony part of the canal, there is a triangular area. Zygoma, can you see zygomatic bone? It is related to the zygomatic bone also. And this is mastoid bone. So this is mastoid. Where there is air cells inside and there is antrum. So this triangular area that I drawn with black, this is your McEwen's triangle. This is your McEwen's triangle. Triangular area. See, it is above the meatus, isn't it? That's why it's also called supra meatal triangle. What is the other name? If you notice, it's also called the supra meatal triangle. 
so that proves that it is above the meatus meatus is the other name for external canal i hope you get that now coming back to labyrinth i was telling you that labyrinth has two functions one that of hearing and other balancing because labyrinth has two parts hearing and balancing uh, we divide the labyrinth into two parts the part of the labyrinth that is responsible for hearing is called the cochlea i'm sure you know this and the part of balancing is vestibule and canals canals means superior uh, semicircular canals so let me write the full name semi circular canals british people call it semi and american call it semi semi circular canal so most of the books the uh, most of the movies that are produced in hollywood which is america semi they can semi 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 circular canal but we are british we follow british english so we call semi circular canal now inside the vestibule there are two things what are the two things in the vestibule one is saccule all these names are important and the other is utricle these are the two things inside the vestibule and how many canals do we have we have superior canal we have posterior canal and we have lateral canal so these are the parts of the labyrinth lateral canal we have mentioned before isn't it remember lateral canal i shown the image of the middle ear as well and if you stimulate the lateral canal it can cause problems of vertigo and nystagmus and all that we have done this but there are other canals also posterior and superior also two things in the vestibule one is sacral and the utricle and the cochlea cochlea is for hearing rest of them are balancing what is this labyrinth made up of if i ask you this labyrinth has two coverings you know the outer covering is made up of bones and that is bony labyrinth it's called bony labyrinth if you go inside that there is another labyrinth inside which is made up of membranes and that is called membranous labyrinth so we have bony labyrinth and membranous labyrinth this is how the bony and the membranous labyrinth look like the first one is bony labyrinth and the second one is membranous labyrinth right here membranous labyrinth right now although now the membranous labyrinth is inside the bony labyrinth coming back to this slide if you notice that although uh, the balancing part is more complex there are more structures these vestibule saccule canal utricle canals three canals and all that but most of the question they ask you is from the cochlea because cochlea is more important functionally for us than vestibule so you can by and large ignore the vestibule you have to know the names of course and you'll be able to identify also i'll show you that in the image also how to identify but otherwise they ask you questions from cochlea and one very popular co question is and we all know cochlea is coiled like this how many coils cochlea has different books will give you different answer but your best answer is always one and a, two and a half turns remember this this is always the best answer so don't follow any other problem okay now if i draw one coil like this see this one coil complete it come back this another coil complete and the third is only half so this end is called the base end and this end of the cochlea is called apex end your cochlea has two ends a base end and the apex end now what you have to know in this that base end is responsible for high frequency sound high frequency sound and apex end is responsible for low frequency sound we all know we can hear a lot of frequencies what is the frequency we can hear 20 hertz till 20000 hertz this is school question remember in school they used to ask what is the frequency we can hear human ear can hear 20 to 20000 so 20 hertz we can hear the apex and 20000 we can hear at the base and in between we can hear other frequencies also 
A different point in the cochlea is for different frequencies. This is what it means in a nutshell. The different point in the cochlea is for different frequency, and we have so many frequencies 20 to 20,000 is too much. It's too much. So, we have 20,000 points almost nearly 20,000 points you need. So, you have to have a long cochlea. Now, long thing, if you want to fit in a small area, what do you do? If you have something very long and you want to fit in a small area, what do you do? You coil it like ribbons. Ribbons are meters and meters, and you can't carry open. You know? So, you coil it. So, that's the idea of coiled cochlea. Is that clear? So, when I, you can easily identify the bony cochlea as well as the membranous cochlea. You can see the coiled structure, the yellow one in the membranous part, that is a cochlea, isn't it? So, this is your cochlea. This is the vestibule. And these are the canals, obviously. Canals are very easy to identify. Actually, cochlea and canals are very easy to identify. So, between the two is the vestibule. And so, this is your cochlea. These are the canals. And in the vestibule area, this is the vestibule area. This is the vestibule area. What is inside the vestibule? Remember? Look here. What is inside the vestibule? Utricle and saccule. So, this is saccule. And this is utricle. Utric and saccule they lie inside the vestibule. So these are the parts of the labyrinth that you must be able to identify. It's easy, it's not difficult. Few names only, not too many. <coughs> what is a membranous labyrinth filled with? What fluid is inside the membranous labyrinth? I'm sure you know it is endolymph. Endolymph lies inside the membranous labyrinth. It is filled with a fluid called endo. Endo means inner one, endo underwala, inner one. And between this and this is the perilymph. So, outside the membrane and between the bone is the perilymph. See, if you cut the cochlea, if you cut the cochlea, any part, let us say cochlea, let us say this is your bony labyrinth, bony and inside is membranous labyrinth, something like this. All that is not like this, this is just to explain, this is not correct diagram, I will tell you later on. So, on the inside is endolymph and what is peri means? Peri means periphery, peri means around, huh? around is the perilymph. So, we have endolymph and perilymph two fluids in the inner ear and the only thing you have to know is the main ion of each of the fluid. So, they ask you which is the main ion of endolymph. The main ion of endolymph is the potassium ion and the main ion of perilymph is the sodium ion and both these names ions are very important MCQ. They ask you in the exam especially potassium. Potassium is very very important MCQ. Sometimes sodium also they will ask you. But potassium is more commonly asked. Okay. Now, I told you that actually the if you cut the labyrinth, it is not like this. Actually, the labyrinth is slightly different. Your bony labyrinth will appear like this. This is correct, but the membranous labyrinth is triangular. The membranous labyrinth is like this, like this and like this, triangular. The red one is the membranous labyrinth and the outer circle is the bony labyrinth. It is actually like this. So, in the membrane is endolymph and here it is perilymph and here it is perilymph. Around the endolymph is the perilymph. That is how you, it is easy to remember. Right. But because the membranous labyrinth is triangular, we call them three membranes. They are three membranes and they have names. The lower membrane is called the basilar membrane because it is in the lower part and lower part is called base, basilar membrane. This angled one is called resinous membrane and this the one that joins the two is triavascularis.
So these are the three membranes in the cochlea. Basilar membrane, resonance membrane and this is cochlea. We are discussing only cochlea because remember I told you cochlea is important. Rest of the vestibules and canals are not important. So we are ignoring them. And these three membranes, they divide the labyrinth into three compartments. This is one compartment, this is second compartment and this is third compartment and they have names. They are not called 1, 2, 3. I am just written 1, 2, 3 so that you understand what are the three ones. They are not called 1, 2, 3. Okay. The upper one is called scala vestibuli. The middle one is called scala media and the lower one is called scala tympani. So, you have six names to remember. Which are the six names to remember? Three membranes and three compartments in the cochlea. That's it. But the most important thing in the cochlea is the sensory organ of hearing. This is the most important thing in the cochlea, the sensory organ of hearing, without which you, you cannot hear. That's why it's called the sensory organ and it has a name. The name of the sensory organ is organ of cortai. Now in the cochlea, besides this membrane, these compartments and the shape, the base and the apex and how many coils, the only other thing you have to know is about this organ of cortai. And organ of cortai you have to know two things. A, where is it present in the cochlea? Where in the cochlea is this present? It is present on the basilar membrane. So if you can see the organ of cortai, it is here, your organ of cortai is here on the basilar membrane. Therefore, you can say it is in scala media, anything on, on the basilar membrane will be in the scala media, isn't it? So, that is one thing you have to remember about organ of cortai, where is it present? And the second thing you have to know about this organ of cortai is the main function. Uh, no, uh, yeah, what is it made up of? What is it made up of? It is made up of inner hair cell, outer hair cell, and supporting cell. So, there are three, three types of cells in the organ of cortai. We have the supporting cells, we have the inner hair cells and we have the outer hair cells. This is what it is made up of. And what is important for you, they ask you the difference between the inner hair cells and the outer hair cells of the cochlea. And this is the last thing in the cochlea you have to know, difference between the inner hair cells and the outer hair cells of the cochlea which is very commonly asked in the exam. There are seven, eight differences, I will tell you five only, the important ones. The shape is different. Inner hair cells, we always draw it like this and this is called flask shape. Outer hair cell, we draw it like this and this is either called tubular or cylindrical, tube or cylinder. So, the shape is different. Which are more in number, which are less in number? Inner are fewer in number outer are more, inner are 3500, outer are 12000, that is why inner can be fitted in one single row, outer needs multiple rows to fit. So, outer are more 12000 nearly and they can be fitted only in multiple rows unlike inner which are 3500 much lesser and they can be fitted in a single line, in a single row. Now comes the two most important difference they ask in the exam. All this is not important. Now comes the two important one. A, inner hair cell produces no emission. No emission produced by inner hair cells. Outer hair cell produces emission called auto acoustic emission. And this is a very popular MCQ. In short, we call it OAE 
and they ask you so this is mcq they ask you very commonly who produces the auto acoustic emission remember it is produced by the outer hair cells of the cochlea okay it's a very simple thing remember that and the last difference is they are uh, not damaged easily inner are not damaged easily outer are easily damaged so outer are more delicate they are more sensitive they get damaged more easily and the question who will damage them either loud sound or autotoxic drug autotoxic drugs or loud sound this is what is going to damage the outer hair cells easily not so much the inner hair cells so loud sound can damage the outer hair cells and if your outer hair cell is damaged you can't hear that's why there is a protection in the middle area. remember that stapedial reflex and if there is a loud sound it decreases the dampens the loud sound by producing that reflex stapedial reflex so it is essential to <coughs> sorry it is essentially to protect the outer hair cells okay but autotoxic drugs can also damage and which is the most popular <coughs> autotoxic drug aminoglycosides aminoglycosides are the most popular autotoxic like gentamicin streptomycin kenamycin tobramycin things like that okay so this is the difference between inner hair cells and the outer hair cells of the cochlea And this completes by and large everything you have to know about the cochlear anatomy, which is the only thing they ask you in the inner ear. But if I ask you how many sensory organs do we have? See, this sensory organ organ of cortai that we are talking about is only for cochlea, isn't it? But we have a sensory organ in the cochlea. We have a sensory organ in the saccule, in the utricle, in superior canal, in posterior canal, in lateral canal. Everyone of them have a sensory organ we are not dealing with all those and they have to be supplied by nerve which nerve supplies this sensory organ of hearing of all the sensory organ of the inner ear eighth nerve inner ear is only one nerve eighth nerve that's why the inner ear is called eighth nerve is called vestibulo cochlear nerve so this nerve comes from the pons the nucleus of this eighth nerve is in the pons it comes from the pons and enters the inner ear to supply the question is which is the entry point that's the question so once again i'll draw the similar diagram this one and this one this one in the inner ear there is a canal here and here there is pons and from pons the nerve comes is a nucleus of the nerve and this enters the ear and this canal is called internal acoustic meatus if the outer one is called external acoustic meatus the inner one will be called internal acoustic meatus iam in short if they ask you the length of the external canal which is 24 they can ask you the length of this canal it is 8 to 10 millimeters and what is the function the nerves travel through this i told you nerves it is only one, not one nerve there are other nerves also we'll discuss this okay so this is about internal acoustic meters that you have to know and last thing in the anatomy we'll discuss is the nerves of the ear but we'll take a break first we'll take a 30 minutes break. usually i take 20 minutes break but i'll rest a little bit i'll eat some medicines and i'll go to the washroom and all that so i need to prepare myself so i'll take 30 minutes break we'll come back and start with the nerves of the ear basically okay hello 